Hello everybody and welcome to the HCW show. This week we are going to be reviewing Friday Night Smackdown, WWE, Night of Champions, AEW, Double or Nothing, Monday Night Raw and the following AEW Dynamite. So, it's going to be a long show. Stay tuned. Roll intro. HCW Reviews <laughs> Hello everybody and welcome to the show. I am your host Frozzy. As always with Rate Wrestle, we are going to be reviewing a lot of wrestling on this show. Um, how are you doing, buddy? Time to talk. Let's speak wrestling. It's mad in it. Like we would I think we yes. mentioned it on the last pod that this one was probably going to be long, and then I completely forgot about it being long until we've come to record. I'm like, ah. Wait till yeah. AEW does collision as well, and then there'll be a week of this where we've got every show in the world. Yeah. Everything gets reviewed. Yeah. Oh, it's a good job we don't do NXT as well, isn't it? Because they had a show. Yeah. <laughs> Rampage Boy. Yeah. They, they, well, yeah. I mean, it could come to that. Now that they're having two shows, it could could be a discussion. Um, yes. So, yeah. We'll we'll see about that. But, yeah. Um, wasn't the best week. <laughs> there, was, there was, like, three shows and two pay-per-views and none of it was great. Um, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, but we'll we'll uh, we'll we'll crack on and we'll get into the reviews and you can get our opinions on things as they happen from there. So if you want to kick us off with uh, SmackDown, right? We'll we'll get going. Yep. So as usual, um, my order of things. I've watched Night and Champions and Double or Nothing before I've watched SmackDown. So uh, this is really out of date to me. Um, so they kicked off with Theory versus Sheamus for the United States Championship. Um, I rated two and three quarters. Um, Sheamus lost from a distraction. And I don't even remember who distracted him. That's how out of place this is for me. No, nope, who distracted Seamus? Who's oh, pretty deadly, pretty deadly distracted Seamus by beating up uh, the brawling brood head side. Um, and in theory, picked up the win with a roll up. Yeah. Um, following on from this, we had the bloodline um, in the ring. Um, so the Usos are pretty much shunned a bit at the moment. Um, so, but they're, they're invited to the thousand day celebration next week. And, um, but they need to have like a sit down of this kind of situation. Um, because obviously stuff is happening. Yeah. Uh, damage control, Bailey and, um, Sherry, um, Sky versus Raquel and Shotzi. Um, around in two and a quarter. It was a typical women's let's throw this match on the card. Yeah. Um, kind of match um, and the finish was really awkward where Shirai kind of could have done something but didn't do it and it was I keep calling her Shirai because that's her name in my head yeah. everyone knows who she is um, so yeah it was just an awkward finish I wasn't a big fan no nothing much to say yeah um, Cameron Grimes a mould of Shanti Adonis yeah as always <laughs> and then um, Corbin attack Grimes so that's uh, okay. West Corp yeah, where's Grimes on the scale this week? No, he's getting released, mate, I'm telling you. I can't remember what the scale was that I what I originally said he'd be released on. Uh, but he's, he's a He'll be released by Christmas, is or by the end of the year. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah I think it's going to happen. Six months. Yeah. Uh, Belair wants to fight Oscar. Oscar comes down, they have a brawl. Go right. home, show. Yeah. Uh, Rick Boogs versus LA Knight. I rated two stars. Um, LA Knight won, and now LA Knight's challenging the Street Profits. So I'm assuming he's going to have a mystery tag partner, and it's gonna, I'm hoping it's going to be someone decent, but I can't think who he could be a tag team partner with. No, I've got a clue off the top of my head. Like his character's not really linked to anyone. There's not anyone in NXT. I could think, you know what, they go well with LA Knight. Yeah, like, yeah it's just... Is there anyone due a return, I suppose, maybe? There's one guy, he's not due a return, but would work perfectly, he's Bobby Roode. But Bobby Roode's out till next year because of his neck surgery. Yes. Um, <laughs> but he would work really well with um, LA Knight. Yeah. Um, can't think of anyone else. Drake Maverick. Where's he? <sighs> he's disappeared off the face of the earth, by the way. He's not even like, on Twitter or anything, he's just gone. Oh, really? Yeah, don't know where he's... Or, or I haven't bothered to look one or two. Um... Carrion Cross versus um, AJ Styles. Um, Carrion prior to this victimizes AJ Styles, and then um, there was a match. AJ mm -hmm. Styles won. Carrion Cross is there for some reason. Yeah, uh, right at two and a half stars. Um, AJ on the mic afterwards says that Seth Rollins is the architect, the 
visionary, blah, 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 but can he be phenomenal? Well, we're about to find out. <laughs> yes. View our Twitch. Um, and then we had Kasami in the ring, and it was um, KO TV. Um, introduces Hay well, they going to introduce Roman Reigns to call him out. Then Heyman comes out, and then Heyman says, "How dare you think that you can bring Roman Reigns out?" Roman Reigns comes out when he wants to come out. Yeah. And then he starts talking some crap, and then here comes the Usos. They just bulge past Heyman. Heyman's like, "What the hell's happened here?" Um, and then KO proper goads Jimmy and Jay by basically saying, "You're like the better half. Like you're just whipping boys, stuff like that." And then Jimmy loses it and eventually rants that much. He goes, you know, in this tag team division, I am the tribal chief. Yeah. And then out of nowhere, Roman Reigns is, oh, and I was like, oh, yes. Um, and he storms down the ring. None of his shenanigans of the 17 minute entrance. Um, looks at Roman, um, looks at Jay, at Jimmy. And they're not really happy and it's a really awkward situation. Then, out of nowhere, KO stunners Roman. <laughs> just stunners him. Yeah. Then the Usos brawl um, with KO and Sammy. They get the kind of upper hand after Solo comes out and just wipes out both of them. And then um, Roman gets Solo to pick up uh, KO. He spears him and they're both out. And then Jay hands Solo the titles. Yeah. And then Jimmy doesn't, doesn't hand Roman the titles. And then Jay's like, what? Okay, and he just eventually grabs them and gives them Roman. And then Roman takes both titles. He takes the ones off solo because he just hands them. And he has all four titles up. Yeah. Imagine. Great, if, imagine. It's a great shot. But... Fucking heavy as well. Know, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, the Bloodline storyline is the thing keeping SmackDown remotely interesting at the minute. Give it wrestling interesting. Yeah. That'd be the way. Oh, that's the main storyline that I care about. As soon as it ends, I'm going to be gutted. Yeah, which we will get into when we go to Night of Champions. Yep, so I've got no notes as we've discussed for this because we watched it live on yeah, Twitch. Yeah, we, there is some highlights of that. Between us, we didn't have a brain cell enough to think that we might need notes on this. So, oh, no, I literally said 20, sec 20 minutes in. I haven't wrote notes for this. Yeah. Continue not to write notes. Yeah. Um, so I just realised that I've got the match order. I'm just going to quickly get my ratings up because they're on my website. So, uh, yeah. Let me just put them up. So we started off with Seth versus AJ. Um, so kicking off with the World of Championship match. Um, it was boring, man. I enjoyed it by the end, but yeah, I can agree. At the start, it was very slow paced. I think it's this card in the US would have better, better matches. But I feel like the matches was just very stale and mm. the fans weren't really that bothered by it. And yeah. I think the wrestlers weren't bothered by it. Um, until you got to the end, yeah, it was just very slow and methodical. There was no real passion from both guys. Like in the end, the I pushed me to a three and a half stars because um, I liked the ending sequence and the yeah. um, how he beat him. But yeah, overall, Seth and AJ wasn't as good as it should have been, and nope. Seth did pick up the win, and he is now the world heavyweight champion. Yes, which has no lineage to the previous world heavyweight champion, and this is just the first. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, I'm glad Seth won, but I just. Thought the match was pants. Mm. Um, it was pants for what it should have been. Yeah. Seth Rollins versus I just the whole shouldn't be that bad. Yeah. No. Um, following this, a match that went on for a while: Becky Lynch versus Trish Stratus. By the end of it, once again, I was a lot. These matches had good finishes, just yeah. not good middles. Yeah. Except for um, one, we'll get to, and well, two, we'll get to. Yeah. Um, Trish versus Becky. So Trish is not, in my opinion, shouldn't be wrestling at this point. I like, she wasn't like the greatest wrestler in a day. Like obviously in the period, she was probably one of the better ones, but now it's just, it's slow and meandering and hmm. it's all character work, but I don't really care enough to care. Like all right, the only thing that saved this match was the surprise ending of it. Yeah. Where out of nowhere, Zoe Stark comes out underneath the apron and absolutely a, obliterates Becky Lynch and I mean obliterate as in she broke fucking Becky Lynch's face yeah 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 um, didn't notice it until like the pants and Becky Lynch just blood everywhere yeah. <laughs> from her nose just everywhere so she's hit the free, uh, C360 onto uh, Becky Lynch and just popped her nose clearly and Trish has won the match and Trish is around yeah I didn't expect it to, to happen that way yeah I don't think I thought Trish had better things to do I'll be honest same 
But yeah, I mean, it's, from my point of view, another, like you said, it didn't get interesting until the end. It was, yeah, it was there. And then the ending happened and it became good. Yeah. Um, followed this book by Gump from Mustafa Ali. This was good, but it was obviously predictable that Mustafa Ali was never, ever going to win this. Oh, there was a moment where, oh, you might have, um, but yeah, Gunther just blew it always been for a lot of the match. Yeah. Um, absolutely larrated his head off a couple of times, and I thought that was going to be the end, and he eventually picked up the win with Powerbomb. Yeah. Um, so this had the excitement factor throughout the match. It was just um, a predictable finish. Yeah, I, I just thought, like like you said, the match was obvious, so now it was all about was the man was the match enthralling enough? Um, and I feel like they got people to buy into it. Ali nearly won. Which was always going to happen. He was always going to have that moment in the match where he's nearly going to win. Uh, mm. I just thought the match was all right. Didn't yeah. offend me. Nah. Well, like I said it's um, no matches were particularly bad on the show. There was no matches except for I'd say the main event where we had there were particularly like wow. Yeah. Um, Bianca versus Asuka. Um, so once again, this is a major grudge match. So Bianca Blair skips down to the ring. Yep. Yeah so angry yeah um and don't remember much of this match i'll That's... be honest i just remember the finish and the finish was really good yeah so i remember oscar tried to spit mist into bianca's face but she ducked completely um and then the finish was bianca um oscar which i've never actually saw why a wrestler doesn't do this that does mist she yeah. just spat mist into her own hand yeah. Like, rimmed her own mouth with her hand and then just rubbed it in her Bianca's eyes when she was in the KOD. Yeah. Bianca was completely blinded and then she uh, picked up the win yeah. um, with a, like, a back kick. Uh, Bianca sold that really well. She actually continued selling it after the match, which was really surprised by. Like, um, proper upset. Um, and Oscar is your champion, which I was really surprised by. I was surprised they did it here. Um, but, yeah, I, I don't know. I thought the match was shocking. For who they are and how good mm. they can work. I just thought the match was awful. It was one of the worst matches of the weekend for me. And I mean, there was a lot of bad stuff on Double or Nothing, but this was there. If you'd have put this on Double or Nothing, it would have fit right in. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we'll get to Double or Nothing. <laughs> um, Rhea Ripley versus Natalia are rated one star because Rhea Ripley won within 30 seconds. Absolutely destroyed Natalia. Pointless. This was. This was pointless. Yeah, I, I don't know why they put it on the card, but it was just. It kind of proved that Rhea Ripley's dominant. That she just. It wasn't like oh, it's a competitive match. It was Rhea Ripley just murdered Natalia. Yeah. <laughs> and the summer of Natalia is over as usual. So we'll see you next year. Yeah. Um, you were away at this point in going to get McDonald's, so you completely missed this match and missed the start of the Lesnar match. I think you might have missed, or did yes. you get back just in time? I caught the ending of the Lesnar match. So, the Lesnar match was stupid. Yeah. Utterly stupid. I don't know if you got to see it in the end. I've not seen it all. I saw the ending, and then you and DP is obviously, like, fills me in on what I've missed. Didn't yeah. sound like... two and a half stars are it, because it was, it was average, but it was just... So, Cody Rhodes, broken arm. Um, so, Lesnar br- brutalised him. Cody kept hitting him with the titanium cast, which is technically legal because it's on his arm and it's technically ring wear, which is fair enough. Owen Hart used to do it. I don't care about that. Um, but it still would hurt if you've got a broken arm and you're whamming someone in the head. Yeah. Um, then, followed by this, Brock Lesnar put Cody Rhodes into a Kimura, Kimura for about two to three, maybe four minutes. Yeah. Cody didn't tap. Let me just get the... On his broken arm, he had a Kimura on. Yeah. Um, he... Did the usual, like, one-arm shock and then kind of thing. Then he hit a few crossroads after his broken arm was in a Kimura for four minutes. Yeah. Then he um, brought Lesnar in F5. He didn't get the win. Then Brock Lesnar got the Kimura back in for an extra two or three minutes. Did Brock, Did Cody Rhodes tap? No. No. Cody Rhodes passed out. Stupid. Yeah. Cody Rhodes should be tapping like a fucking... Dog, nah, like if I can, my arm was getting ripped. No man, no, even the toppest man in the world is tapping. Yeah, like, and logically, anyway, what wellness program is allowing this match to happen? <laughs> well, it's not wellness, is it? You mean like, doctor? yeah, it's, you know, like, yeah, like what 
ring committee or whatever they want to yeah. do. Like with wrestling committees allowing a man to fight with a broken arm. Yeah. What referee is allowing that to continue? They should have just made it unsanctioned. Yeah, lights out or something yeah. like that. Needed to. Like then again, yeah, this couldn't be in a lights out match. This after the next match would have been awful. Yeah. Um. But yeah, so it made no sense. Lesnar's won, and Cody versus Lesnar is going to continue. Uh, I don't know how it can continue because Le- Rhodes needs as a broken arm, so he's clearly going to be out for three months. Yeah, no. He'll be resting next week. He's, he's All for already, long. Already released his schedule, mate. It's already out. <laughs> yeah, it's so stupid. Yeah. Um, but yeah, following that, we had the best match of the night, which was always going to be Kasami versus the bloodline of Roman Reigns versus Solo. Um, so straight away, Roman kept was doing the ultimate face, uh, for ultimate heel thing of he was going to fight Sammy in the middle of the ring. Kept building, the crowd will love it, and instantly tagged out. Yeah. Um, then there was the usual like uh, solo whamming Sammy, fire out, come back from Kevin Owens, them overtaking Solo, Roman having a bit of an offense in the ring, but not really getting in the ring that much because he is the tribal chief. Um, out of nowhere, the Usos come down and um, attack Kasami, and they're going to put him through a table. Now, at that point, I thought Roman was going to be a four. Like, he's going to have six tolls. <laughs> um, and then they get to... Uh, Roman's outside, knocked out, and he looks up, and Solo gets accidentally super kicked by the Usos. So then, obviously, Roman's livid by this, comes in the ring. Um... No, like they're uh, like he's basically having a massive go at Jay because Jay has always been the thorn in the side of the Usos. Yeah. Um, pushes him in the face, goes, you know, I'll get out, I'll do this on my own. Turns around, Jimmy Uso super kicks his face off. Yeah. And then everyone, they were all just like, whoa. <laughs> oh, oh. And then Jay's just like, <laughs> oh, <Yeah. what? laughs> oh no. And he's like, what are you doing? And then Jay, Jimmy's just going like. What you should have done a long time ago. Yeah. Um, and then, out of nowhere, Jimmy pushes Jay out the side and super kicks Roman again in the face. And then he does, like, this most, like, guttural relief, like, scream of, like, you know, built all of this intensity, just relief. Yeah. Like, this has happened. And then he, they both kind of leave to the entrance. Um, Sammy KOs uh, Roman with, like, a louver kick and, and then... Um, did Solo get pinned in the end? Because Roman went on the legal man, yeah, was no, it? Sol- Solo yeah. was the legal man. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then they um, obviously picked up the win. And then it just ended with the shock of Jimmy and Jay on the entrance and Roman just looking like, what, what's happened? Yeah. Um, so SmackDown is going to be, except for everything else on the card, it's going to be incredible. <laughs> yeah, exactly. SmackDown's going to be really, really good for whenever they decide to do that bit of the show. Um, or Roman's not going to be there and everyone's going to be like it's a thousand days <laughs> he's got to be there imagine I know yeah uh, but yeah it was just average it was a bit meh uh, yeah. what, what did you rate the last match uh, four stars four stars right no fair enough so we'll, we'll... it was more of the story I'll be honest if you took that story out it would probably be about three and a quarter but the story yeah. built so well and yeah overall that's why good storytelling helps yep of course it does Got him an extra three quarters of a star from you, so um, yes. let us go into double or nothing, which I'm really looking forward to. Yeah, I have to turn the page back because you know double or nothing happened on. I don't know what. Um, so we kicked off with the the most ridiculous thing. Um, so they had the casino battle royale. Um, so 21 people, including Orange Cassidy, winner wins the title. So Orange Cassidy is defending his title in a 21-man battle royale. Yeah. So clearly Orange Cassidy won the match, which is just insane in itself. Yeah. Um, there was a few storyline things in there. Ricky Starks eliminating Jay and Juice. Yeah. Um, Dustin Rhodes struggling to be alive. Yeah. Um, Strickland and uh, Big yeah, Big Bill, that story. Um, and then it ended with Cassidy doing a fake kick to knock, um, like a weak kick, you know, like he's, um, I don't care, kind of kick to knock yeah. off Strickland to pick up the win. Yeah. So the thing I said on the podcast for last week was they need to get the title away from Cassidy. Yeah. 
Who can beat Cassidy now? He's won a 21 man battle royal. <laughs> Who can. He's Superman. I, I agreed with you that the title needed to come off him. Because um, I just don't think Orange Cassidy needs a title for the character he has anyway. Um, but yeah, they, I don't know who beats him now. Um, he can't lose. Yeah, he's just beat 21 people. He's the trouble chief of AEW. Like, yeah. he can't lose. Look, yeah. what they're going to do now? He's just beat 21 people. Yeah. yeah. Even when he faces people and they cheat, he can't lose. I don't no. know what they're going to do. No, it's, it's absolute madness. What I will say is, in terms of Battle Royals, as they usually do, it was great at the end. I just don't agree with the winner. I thought the ending sequence was really good. Like, when you got down to the final four, the match was fine. Um, and then when you got down to Swerve and, and Orange, it was really, really good. Um, but, yeah, the wrong person won. Yeah, it's just endless. And, like, it's going to lose the pop. So, like, you're going to lose it on a random dynamite. Okay. Yeah. Uh, moving on, I read the two and a half stars. It was just the idea they finished kind of late. It was it was an average battle royale with a good ending ish. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we had the unsanctioned match. I think it was unsanctioned. Cole versus Jericho. It may as well. Um, yeah, this was fucking mad. Yeah, I don't understand. I always said, oh, Cole and Jericho will have a good match. Yeah, no. Cole and Jericho had an average to all right match, which saddens me because it's Cole versus Jericho. Um, so the special enforcer gimmick of Sabu was only used so Sabu could put someone through a table at the start, never to be seen again. Yeah. Um, they cleared off the Jazz Society. And then, to be honest, I was eating and I didn't really pay it. Like, I was dipping out of this match. Um, they used the Blair, not Blair, what's her name? Baker came down, she hit Jericho with the kendo stick a few times. Soraya came down, Baker chased her off. Yeah. Um, and then, how'd you win a unsanctioned match? In the dumbest way possible, if you're AEW. It's fucking shit. You won a unsanctioned match via ref stoppage. Yeah. Get oh. out. Yeah. I was so so angry. Cole won. So obviously this story's over. It just yeah. Well, we know it's that, but yeah. Um, the thing that annoyed me is not only ref stoppage, but the actual stoppage itself was a sequence of about eight punches, if that. Yeah. I've seen you and just... fights go longer than that. It's like... Yeah. It was such a dumb finish. It was just so stupid. It really angered me. And I watched this live. And I haven't watched an AEW pay-per-view live for ages. And it just set the tone for the rest of the pay-per-view. <laughs> Yeah, the trouble is, I'm trying to not be that guy that just dogs on AEW, but this card, it's it's hard not to. Like, there's not much. Like, normally their pay per views are incredible. Yeah. But this yeah, this was, yeah, as we go along. Um, so, yeah, that was a thing. And then we followed this up with FTR versus um, Double J, Triple J, J, J Leaf, and Jeff Jarrett. Um, I didn't hate this match. It wasn't like amazing. Like FDR kind of made it as best as they could. Um, there was two. There was a few shenanigans. I rated it three stars because Audrey Hepburn got hit with a guitar. That is top notch quality wrestling. <laughs> that was wild. But take that away from it. Truly give it a star rating that it actually was for the content in the match from the people in it. How the fuck do FDR have a bad match with anyone? Yeah, it just wasn't fun. <laughs> No, it wasn't um, good. But yeah. It just, Audrey Hepburn got hit in the head with a guitar, so it's, who so cares? It's got an extra star. That's the, apparently. It, do you know what made me happy about it? Cool. That as soon as that happened, I knew she wouldn't be on the rest of the show. Yeah, no, true. She, she'd done it. That was, yeah, it was just like, yeah, it was just like, cause she, like, what gives her the right to march down? Like, she could, oh, God. Anyway, yeah, so FTR retained. Yeah. Shit, mate. Um, Christian versus Wardlow. Um was a just a boring ladder match. Like it for me was old school ladder match. You know, like the like at the start yeah. and in the middle of the match it was all old school and I was like, right, it's not great, but it's better than what's come before it. And I get sort of like what they're trying to do. And then the ending just fucked it. <laughs> it all started going south when Arn Anderson came down. <laughs> yeah. uh, old man Arn Anderson came down to the ring. 
bit Luchasaurus's flipping thing off. Yeah. Like, he ripped his, like, you could see a bit of skin. It looked like, yeah. yeah. And then the worst thing was, look at Arnold Arn- Arn- and mouth with blood everywhere. <laughs> it's yeah. like fucking, it's like he ripped his heart out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't remember the ending. I just remember Wardlow winning. <laughs> Well, I, I, I just don't, I can't get my head around how you go from it being a pretty placid match to getting where it got to. Chaos? Yeah, because Wardlow did the, the senton onto Luchasaurus outside the ring. Yeah. From the top of the ladder, through the table. And then Christian was about to win and Arn Anderson pulled him down. And then Wardlow just magically appears, does whatever he does and wins. Uh, I think he power bombed him and then climbed the ladder and Arn Anderson yeah. sort of held it in place, making sure no one else could get in. And then yeah, Wardlow just won from there, but it was dumb as shit. <laughs> yeah. And I remember something that like I hate in wrestling, they do it a lot in Josie wrestling, where the referees hold the ladders. Yeah. And it's like that's they just let the wrestler go up the ladder. I know it's unsafe, but this is wrestling, you shouldn't be holding because it looks like you're helping him win. Yeah. Because Rick Knox tried to hold the ladder the first time, the broken one. Yeah. And then he actually, Wardlow was halfway up and he tried to hold it and he snapped it on accident yeah. because he was holding it and Wardlow was pissed. Yeah. He was like, well, what are you doing? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it was a rock. Like, it, well, I didn't hate it. It was just the ending was, it was Yeah, no, it was fine until it got to the end. I, I was actually enjoying the match. I was like, ah, oh, this is all right. Yeah. Um, and then we had a match was just so shenanigan-y. So we had Jimmy Jamie Hayter versus Tony Storm. Uh, Jamie Hayter's injured, yeah. legitimately injured. So the match started down with a beatdown, and then Baker got involved um, like 20 minutes after the break beatdown. Yeah. So Jamie, uh, J- uh, Dr. Rick Baker is watching out back and has seen Jamie Hayter get like, absolutely destroyed for about eight to nine minutes. She's definitely there because we've seen her in the Chris Jericho match Yeah. Um, when she chased off Soraya. So she was definitely there. So she watched that. And then she chased off um, Thingy after um, Hater got battered for ages. Yeah. Um, Sheeta was down. Ro- Ro- um, Ruby Solo was doing something. There was a lot of random crap happening. I read it once, though. It was awful. Yeah, no, I it, don't, wasn't, it wasn't. Vacate the all. Yeah. Don't do stu- stuff like this. If she's yeah. injured, vacate the all. Yeah, because like, as soon as the match was announced and we knew it was definitely going to happen, we knew that Hater was losing. They've just done it in such a clusterfuck way that didn't need to happen. They tried to keep yeah. Hater strong, but there was, like, if you're going to do that, Stupid. yeah, just like don't have so much shenanigans. If you want her to get beat down or something like that, fine. But just have them throw her in the ring and then Tony Storm beats her and that's the end of the match. Fine. Yeah. There was no need for any of the rest of the stuff. Yeah, so moving on to some more um, random stuff. So we had the House of Black, and I was exploited because we was going, oh, they've not announced who they're going to face. So it might be some really, like, exciting. Yeah. So here comes the Acclaimed. I like the Acclaimed, but I didn't. I, it's not. It was just, oh. Oh, it's the Acclaimed. Yeah. I was, like, I was just... Um, the crowd went nuts for them, though. Yeah, they love it. It's just I was looking forward to someone exciting. Like, this, it was like I was just. Yeah. I don't know who it could have been. I was just expecting someone. Yeah. Obviously, um, Max Caster mentioned Dominic um, on the mic, which was funny. Best part of the match. Yeah. Um, look, it was a good match. I enjoyed the match. Um, it was. Um, I Billy Gunn was the best part of the match, which was mental. Like the Billy Gunn fire up at the end and eventually losing. Like I read it in the end for in quarter stars. So I got into it. Yeah. Um, and overall, it was a fun match. Um, House of Black looks strong, and um, yeah. like they need to stop showing Bowens as the weak link as well. By the way, yeah. like Bowens just get battered all the time. It's just yeah. like you're the weak link. Why are we still tagging? Yeah, no, um, it, it wasn't like you said. It wasn't a bad match, but I just feel like for the pretty much the whole show, you could say this as well. The crowd was just dead until the acclaim come out, and then Billy Gunn got in the ring, and then after that, it died again. Yeah. Which is odd for AEW. Yeah. Um, but we'll move on. We had um, Taya versus Jade. Um, right, there's two and a quarter stars. Um, the Jade entrance was weird to me. Um, yeah. Like, it was a facey entrance, and it, but it was weirdly facey because it was like, this is how pretty girls walk, and it's like... Ugh. Yeah. Um, 
she kicked out the Valhalla move and it really annoyed me. Like, like the end of the Valhalla, she shouldn't have kicked out of Tyre's finish. Eh, uh, well, I mean, given how the match went and we know how it finished, then I get it. Uh, the Tyre's just bit like the Tyre's such a good wrestler and she's already demoralised. And then the show her and Dynamite. I'm going to skip forward to this. That like, uh, before we, she has a match and they're showing Tyre as the next challenger and it's like, but she's lost twice to Jade now. Yeah. It's like. Your buckings backwards. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Jade ends up picking up the win, and then for some reason, Mark Sterling decides, you know what, Jade's had a tough match, but you'll fight anyone. Yeah. So here comes Chris Statlander. Yeah. Um, return after we were joking, like how long is she going to be out together? And she she's not out there yeah. anymore. Nope. Um, match kicks off straight away, and Statler went and just destroys uh, Jade Gargill, ends this 60 million win streak. Yeah, 60 and 1 it is now. Yeah. Just, just I, I feel like I wanted it off Jade, but I'd rather either Tyre win it cleanly, or Statlander win it cleanly, like yeah. as in like a proper An match. actual match, yeah. Yeah, right. it just feel like what a d- abrupt ending. It just like, they haven't got like a money in the bank or anything like that that she's cashed in. She's just randomly come out, and they've just been like, you know what? This is a match for the title. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like, no yeah it's what the it's Tony Khan syndrome, though, isn't it? A lot of Jim Cornette speaks about it and people. Tony Khan's got a plan in his head. He will never differentiate from that brand. Yeah. So as soon as Chris Stanley, the Statlander's not injured, yeah, we're back to what we were supposed to be doing. Yeah, it was the same with Hangman, wasn't it? When he won the title. Yeah, it was like yeah, he didn't trigger it properly. No, but yeah, that's the end of the AEW rant. The next two matches are good. Yeah, well, in, in fairness, though, I do just want to say that was the best Jade Cargill match I've ever watched. Two and, and a half you rated it two and a half stars. <laughs> it's the best I've ever uh, seen it be. So. Best Jade Cargill match was her first match in that um, tag team match. Cody and Brandy versus Shaq and Jade Cargill. That wasn't where even Shaq good. went through a table. I rated it three stars. I love that match. Yeah, but it wasn't loved because it. Jade was good. It's because Shaq it went through a table. Shaq- yeah, but this wasn't because Jade was good. It was because Ty was in the match. <laughs> no, I thought Jade was good here. I genuinely nah. thought Jade was fine, yeah. Nah. I disagree. Moving on. We had the Pillars match. Um, so, speaking before of, we start, I think... Yeah, no, yeah. so, speaking of stupid entrances. Yeah, I don't understand the entrance, Darby and Alan's entrance. No, so this is the dumbest thing I've ever seen. This is a fucking world title match, mate. Take it seriously. <laughs> yeah, like, at least have a good entrance, yeah. like, but it was just like a weirdly jackass shot entrance of yeah, him being Elvis. And it pissed me off. I was just like, this is a world title match. We're supposed to like... I already don't like the idea of this match being for the world title. And now you've done a I also entrance. told you that this match wasn't going on last. <laughs> yeah, no, you did. Yeah. Uh, so four-way match. Um, it was good. Um, yeah. Very choreographed, but very good. Um, like there was a lot of like shenanigans. MGF was trying to be a comedian a lot of the match. Like he, he was just shouting out runny things. But I think it was just because the crowd was so dead. He was trying to make them laugh to get them involved. Yeah, um, well, it was good. I hope he does that more. Yeah, um, like just like to be a scene and like he just turn around and a suplex was about to hit him and he go ah shit. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, yeah, which is a great thing because a wrestler you turn around going just like oh fuck yeah, yeah. Um, this is happening. Um, a lot of like action sequences. Guevara is probably his best match I've seen. Like he, the fans were behind him, which was mental because Guevara is always shat upon by the fans. Yeah, well, did, um, I mean, yeah. when you when you announced that your girl, your wife, oh, was his pregnant. child. I've got yeah. about that. Yeah, <laughs> it's good. Um, it? He did his love actually cue cards and Ty yeah. is pregnant. Yeah. Um, Sammy a fantastic diving cutter. Um, oh, mate, this was like so hot. good. It was art. I think it was on Darby Allen as well. He just slides out the ring and he catches him so perfectly. Yeah. So and then um, they're playing... The main part of this match is Darby Allen versus MJF. Um, the headlock sequence, so good. Yeah. Like So MJF tries to pin on Darby Allen with the headlock again. Darby just kicks out. Darby nearly beats MJF with the headlock. Yeah. They just keep going for... The, they're not finishing the match. They go for the headlock takeover pin. Yeah. And the ending was so good. Like, yeah. the ending, like, the smarts of MJF. Genius. So, I think it was Sammy or it was Jungle Boy. It doesn't really matter who it was. Um, Darby's about to hit a coffin drop on either Jungle Boy or Sammy. And MJF throws the title belt yeah. on top of um, Jungle Boy or Sammy. Darby Allen um, does Bad his uh, coffin drop. 
and obviously he's fucked. So then MJF just fucking headlock take over. Ben. Yeah, it's so good. <laughs> so good. He's won the match after talking so much shit. You'd never think it'd happen again. He's beaten twice with headlock take over. Yeah, fucking no, it's, dickhead. It's great. It's absolutely. <laughs> yeah, great. I rated it four and a half stars. I really enjoyed the end. Then MJF made this match. And what I thought was, what they're going to do smartly now is, Pillar's going to disappear. You're going to have the story of MJF versus Darby Allen maybe for another match. Not like in a pay-per-view, but like halfway through the year. Halfway through like the cycle before the next pay-per-view. Yeah. We'll get to AEW. Um, but yeah, overall, really good match. Yeah. And then we had um, the main event was the Arnicky and Arena match. The BCC versus... Um, the elites, fucking hell, I forgot who they were for a second. Um, it was Arnarchy. Um, You'll be pleased really to know fun. it's the first books match I've not skipped in ages. When it gets yeah, to you half, fucking enjoyed it as it, well. When it gets to half four in the morning, you're in. <laughs> it's just like, yeah, no, I'm, I'm watching this now. Yeah, and you enjoyed it. I you, did enjoy you it. Enjoyed. I did enjoy it. Um, so they had some, to start off with, they had some weird band um, playing um, Wild Thing. Yeah. It was like a, Weird, like, 90s rock, grungy kind of looking band. I don't, I don't like with a weird black mask on. I don't know. I don't know who he is. I'm pretty sure uh, I've seen him perform in the pub across the road from me on karaoke. That's how bad. But yes. So they were playing that and it kicked off. They all brawled around the arena and you thought, oh, this, this band's going to end. Um, as soon as it hits the, the ending song, they'll just go off. Yeah. No. Then they just soloed into it again, like another version. I was thinking, okay, eventually. Then they soloed into another version of it. It was like 10 minutes in, and I was going, it's fine, but this guy's draining. Yeah. Like, it's not a good version no. of this song. But luckily, the Young Bucks put an end to this with Super kicking the man's face off. But the drummer carries on for yeah. me. He doesn't care that his mate's been fucking it in the face. <laughs> I've never been so happy for the Young Bucks to super kick someone. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, like, everyone looks strong in the BCC in this match. Like, Claudio absolutely obliterated Matt Jackson out back. Um, yeah. Paul drove him in a pickup truck. Yeah. Um, like, people getting hit by fucking bells, hammers, thumbtacks, barbed wires. Yeah. And, and, like, Moxley gets dropped on a barbed wire chip by Mega. Yeah. Um, after a Mega drops him on it. Um, Matt Jackson comes back. The only thing I hate about this, he does that crappy Northern Knight like, suplex down the ramp. Like, I hate, like, the Northern, like, suplex. He, do you remember when he did it in the football match? Yeah. Like, the stadium stampede, and he did it the whole length of the pitch, and it's like, yeah. you dick it. Yeah. Um, but then he comes in the ring of fucking switching music, uh, John Moxon, his boot explodes. Yeah. <laughs> that looks so good. Yeah, it did. Because I didn't expect it. It was just like, oh, well, it's going <laughs> <laughs> to... That was a He's better explosion. It was a better explosion than the exploding barbed wire match that him and yeah. the Um And then fucking... John Moxley pulls out some tacks and they pull off the boot and uh, Matt Jackson. I was thinking, oh, they're not going to do it. They did it. They yeah. fucking did the uh, good old old school, um, old school like, um, back suplex but dropping you on your foot. Yeah. Tomic drop. Yeah. And right on the thumbtacks. Yeah. Oh, and they proper clumped in his oh, heel. they're in. It's like, yeah. ow. Um, then the BCC was properly in control. Um, Hangman's not blowing, surprisingly. Uh like they revealed that his eye patch wasn't needed. Yeah. Um, then the um, Kenny Omega's about to win, and Don Callis comes down and stabs him in the head again with a screwdriver. Uh, well, but Kenny kind of turns around before he's going to do it and goes, "Oh crap!" And then Don's like, "Oh crap!" Yeah. And then out of nowhere, a hooded figure comes out and absolutely yeets Kenny Omega in the face. Yeets him, turns around, and it's fucking Takeshita, and I was like, "Yeah." He's not joined the elite. Oh. Yeah. Um, and then it ends up with the BCC winning, the tr- the correct winners. It was. I even got, in FPL, I got the guy who got the winning pin. I picked Wheeler Utah. Because I was like, if they're winning... Wheeler Utah? Yeah. I was like, if, if if they're getting the win, who needs the pin? Wheeler Utah. Right, okay, that's where well, I'm going. guessing you didn't pick a mega to, mega to lose, though, did you? No, you? I did not pick a yeah, mega I was going to say... So, just to confirm, Wheeler Utah has cleanly pinned Kenny Omega. Yeah, it was Matt Jackson, I think, I picked to take the pin. Uh, but, yeah, that kind of, like, the last two matches saved Double or Nothing from being an absolute shit show. Like, yeah. it wasn't good, no. but, like, it wasn't, um, at least he saved the best of last. Yeah, uh, can you imagine let's move if on. they'd have done it wrong? 
and put one at the start, one at the end, the whole middle of it would have just been shit. Or oh, they put the unsanctioned man at the end. Oh god. Um, but yeah, so that's well, that's the two pay per views out of the way. So we just got two um, TV shows left. So let's skip away from AEW and go back to WWE, and we'll talk through Raw. How long have we been recording? Forty minutes dead. God fucking damn it! I can do this in twenty minutes. Let's do this. Yeah. Rollins, Miz, Trish, Industry. No. <laughs> um, <laughs> So Rollins is down. Um, he's getting his um, like fan reaction, obviously. Whoa! Um, and he said he's going to face all comers. Um, and then out of nowhere comes AJ Styles, the man that's on SmackDown. Um, so yeah, the draft means nothing. No. Um, so he's just turned up on SmackDown, and then he. I thought I was going to challenge him, but no, he just came to say that you know Seth earned it, and he deserved the title. So, obviously, the best people to come out at this point are the Judgment Day. Just like, oh, the Judgment Day are smarmy bastards. I love them. Um, Finn was just basically saying, you know, I've, we've, uh, you know, we've beat the uh, the tag team champions. The be- the people that just beat Roman Reigns. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, um, and then Rollins and AJ just challenged um, one set of them to um, face them on the night. Um, this was followed by Miz versus Ricochet for a chance to be in the Money in the Bank um, ladder match. Right at two and a half stars. Miz tried his little heart out, but Ricochet picked up the win with a shooting sharp press. Yeah. Um, Trish Stratus was down next, and um, she came to the ring and said, you know what? I had it all. I didn't need help um, and stuff like that, being a smarmy heel. Then she invites Zoe Starks down. Um, Zoe Starks basically says, thank you, Trish. You know, you were my idol, crap like that. Then Becky comes down, proper like busted. You can see the blood on her flipping arm from her. She's still wearing the Kill Bill suit. And she comes down and tries to attack Trish and Zoe Starks. And Zoe Starks hits another C360 and Becky in the lane again. So they're building freaking Zoe Starks quite all. Yeah, 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 definitely. She's going to lose the rivalry, but yeah, the building yeah. there at least. Becky knew fucking to protect her face, though. Did you see her? She, did she put her hands up for the yeah. fucking knee that time? Yeah. I don't blame Joey Starks that knee. His knee's going towards the face. Protect your face. Yeah, it's a risk of a move, in it? Like, you know the risk when you're taking that move. Yeah, but it's either you protect your face or you turn your face. Mm, (laughs) Not the knee. (laughs) Um, Inda Scher versus um, Ace Ventura and Javier Bardem. (laughs) Um, That's what I've written here. Um, It's Ventura, Calias, Gonzalez or something, and Javier Belias, but I've just written Ventura and Javier. When I I looked at the results for scoring the WCP sheet, it had the the other guy and just question marks. (laughs) The guy you called Ventura was not on the the review that I read. Yeah. (laughs) Because he's not on there, but um, Javier's fought in NXT at some point, supposedly. Reddit quarter star, I'm sure won. Uh, Kasami came down. They won. They finally won. That's what they're saying about the rivalry. And then Kevin Owens, brilliant. Imperium just come out of nowhere. And then Kevin Owens rants. You broke the rule of wrestling. No one said your name. Why are you down here? You only come out when someone says your name. (laughs) (laughs) Kevin Owens was gold all through this, by the way. Kevin Owens has like, turned a new golden leaf, though. His comedy time is brilliant, just yeah. the rage. Yeah. Um, and then, like, he, they're arguing, and then um, Imperium is saying stuff, and then all you hear is, shoosh, yeah. shoosh, please. <laughs> then, um, so Chad's coming down, and then obviously Triple M are completely, they're just washed the layer out of this now. Like, Maxine Dupree is a full on fledged member of Alpha Academy. Yeah. Um, Chad Gable's on board with her as well. There's no kind of rivalry with that anymore. And then Kevin Owens was going, you know, you've got to fight them, but Chad, Chad, say that thing. And then Chad's like, what you want about? He says, say that weird thing you do, you know, that word weird. And he goes, okay, ah, thank you. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, Kasami are on commentary. So, it's Alpha Academy versus Imperium. Um, decent match. We're at it two and three quarters. Imperium picked up the win. It was more about the Sammy commentary and KO commentary of being gutted about that um, they won. Um, just overall blog, fun. Yeah, have you fun seen? Segment. Have you seen the video that they've? I don't know if I saw it somewhere on Twitter. But after the match, obviously Imperium do the thing in the ring where they stand there and they be all official. And Kevin Owens yeah. is like, he needs to wipe the sweat off his head. And next minute, he just goes like that and wipes the sweat off his head. But it's like the timing of Ko saying it and it happening. It's like there's no way you could have heard him <laughs> say it. So it it was unreal. I'll I'll try and find the video. It's so good. Yeah, that sounds fun. 
That sounds weird, yeah. yeah. Um, where am I? Wrestling. Um, Raquel was backstage because we're having the Fatal 4 Way tag team match. Um, Bailey laughs at Raquel and then Raquel says, Didn't you lose your match? And then Bailey, oh. Um, so it's <laughs> just funny to me. Uh, Fatal 4 Way women's match. I read it two and three quarters. It was actually fun. Um, right people when it Ronda and Baszler are the most legit people to hold that tag team championships yep. they need to help they need to hold that for at least four to five months yeah. clean wins no shenanigans get flipping Jasmine Duke back yeah. just you know if they're going to add to it just be like yeah I'm gutting Marina Sheffield and fucking AW yeah. get the proper four horse from not actually taking control of the division yeah. Um, good finish as well. Um, so Chotzi jumped off the top rope to hit her finish. It was it's a version of like the sent on coughing drop, but Ronda just catches her into an armbar, breaks yeah. her arm instantly, and Chotzi does the smart thing. She taps instantly because someone's about to break her arm. Yeah. Or she should have done is just let her break her arm and then just sit in it for five minutes. Yeah. And pass out. Well, my arm's broke now. So. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's what's the worst that could happen. So, um, next up, we had Ziggler versus JD. I rated this quarter a star because it ended in the count out instantly because JD Madonna just killed Ziggler again. Yeah, it, was about, it went for about 40 seconds, didn't it? Yeah, yeah. I don't mind because it's part of the story. Like, JD Madonna doesn't give a shit. He just wants to murder Ziggler. Yeah, he just wants to kill him. <laughs> um, next up, Cody Rhodes comes down with his broken arm. He's offering Lesnar an open challenge. When, Cody? You've got a broken arm. He said any time, any place, didn't he? So it's, at least it's not going to be next. Um, and then he says Lesnar's afraid. Ah, yes, of course. The man that just broke your arm and made you pass out. Afraid. Scared. The story's never going to be over. It'll never be over! <laughs> <laughs> uh, Riddle's backstage. Gunther comes up to him. Gunther just basically laughs in Riddle's face. <laughs> just like... <laughs> You know, you're just, just not funny. Yeah. Um, Ronda and Shana are backstage. Um, they're the baddest team. That's what they said, and I agree. Like, <laughs> yeah. uh, Nakamura versus Reed are right this three stars. Really good match. Nakamura's over again in Raw, which is good. Yeah. Um, didn't make Reed look lo- weak by losing, because, you know, Nakamura. And the finish was really good. I like the finish. Nakamura, a bon- uh, I might have said a bonsai then, flipping, yeah, Nakamura hit Yokozuna's finish. Uh, Nakamura um, at Kinshasa, Reed rolled out the ring because he got knocked out of the ring. Reed took 20 seconds to get into the ring, but it's a WWE count. At nine, he rolled in the ring. Nakamura hit another Kinshasa and pinned him. Yeah. Wrestling, you know. <laughs> so Simple. The MJF, last man, last man standing thing, pin him twice. Yeah. You know, um, and the Iron Man. Wrestling is simple when you make it simple. Yeah. That's what should have happened. Um, and we ended up with the Judgment Day um, backstage. Um, Rhea's on about how she beat Natty straight away. Commentator says, "Before I let you go, and the Judgment Day is annoyed. Who's going to be your parent. Like, who's going to be the parent tonight?" They go, "Wouldn't you like to know?" Yeah, yeah, I would like to know. Yeah. No. Um, <laughs> and then Judgment Day versus uh, AJ and Rollins. So the pairing was Priest and Balor. Um, Dom and Rhea get um, evicted at some point during the match. Rated three, and I think I rated three and a half stars. I've got it on the screen, actually, because I think I rated three and a half, but it might be three and a quarter. Hmm. Hmm. It was the the part of this match for me was where Rhea returned right to taunt the crowd, and Zeth like, put his arm around it, and she clearly thought it was Dom. <laughs> yeah. They showed the um, Shawn Michaels doing that um, yeah. on Twitter, because Shawn Michaels did it with Melina. Yeah. Uh, but that one was a lot better because Shawn Michaels obviously is that character that's like at the time like the comedy thing and he went ah as well when he was there Um, so AJ and Rollins just clean won Um, so it's just like a grand and moan Rollins picked up the win and um, kind of AJ should now disappear and stand to that yeah and that's probably what's going to happen but uh, there is rumours that someone's going to a couple of people from Raw are going to be on Smackdown so yeah well, the, the brand split is working. Um, but yeah, with that, we'll move into Dynamite. Wild thing. Du, 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 du. So we started off with the uh, BCC, um, which was the pairing of Moxley, Claudio, and Wheeler Utah. 
and they were facing the Lucha Bros and Bandido. So Bandido has now gone from the best friends to a tag team that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> Max and Luchadors. Um, right, this three and a quarter stars. Really fun match. Uh, and Yuta picked up the win with um, another seatbelt pin after um, Claudio kind of upcutted one in the ring. So Wheeler Yuta is getting pushed to the moon. As he should. And the, what made this match even better is Brian Danielson's commentary. Like Brian Danielson said, like it's just a love hate relationship with you. He said we had Wheeler around, so we were eating. My family were eating, and um, Wheeler Ute was doing five hundred squats in front of us. And you know, if he looked at us, I cut him with a razor. <laughs> <laughs> oh, f- <laughs> nice. So yeah, that was a thing. Um, and uh, <laughs> have you heard of the herd? Have you heard this yet? I don't think I've heard this, and I think they've made it up this week. John Moxley is the master of deaf jitsu. I heard, I'm sure that was mentioned on the pay per view. Was it mentioned on the pay per view? It's just, it, well, I must have not been buying a gender. It's just, I love the line deaf jitsu. It's yeah, just no, like, it perfectly sure. fits him. Yeah, no, I'm sure it was mentioned in the Anarchy match. Yeah. Um, we had following this, uh, they led with the elite, which was good. Um, so the elite backstage moping around, um, basically saying, you know, we're the heart and soul of this company, and look what's happened here. Then, out of nowhere, here comes the dark order. I forget they exist. Um, and then Evil Uno goes, you know, I can see you with your new friends again, Go, uh, Paige, and like proper annoyed about it. And then Paige rushes off, so um, the elite versus dark order's happening, yeah. I'm excited. I'm not. <laughs> um, and also, um, the commentator said, there's a rumour, um, the announcer said there's a rumour that um, Omega's... Oh, no, that was it. Evo Ono said that... Um, hasn't Omega fled the country? Like, he's gone back to Canada. And then well, Paige goes... not in Canada, don't they? Yeah, he goes, he's not in Canada. He's, he's left the country, but he's not in Canada, which, assuming that means Japan. Yeah, he's going to be defending his title, isn't he? Oh, he's got to. I forget that he has the title. Mm. Um, next up, we have Bullet Gold um, in the ring. So the first of 25 interviews with Tony Giovanni in the ring. He was having a good day, Tony Giovanni. Um, so they were just asking, why did FTR get an, into our business? FTR comes down, and then the attack, Bullet, um, Bullet Gold attacks FTR, but Starks chases them out. Yeah. And then Starch challenges White to a match next week, and I'm like, I don't want to see. I don't want to see Starks. I, I'm bored of Starks. He's and he does like he he does the typical. How am I going to get over? What I'll do is I'll say a really bad word, so he calls him like a bitch ass pussy or something like. That. Yeah. Starks. Um. So following um the bitch ass pussy, we've got Tony Khan. Um. So he's on the screen in his typical. Yeah. Awkward smile. Hello everyone, so now now collisions coming up next in, 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 uh, in Chicago. So we're gonna announce who's back but CM Punk Yeah. And then the crowd go absolutely mildly aggressively happy and angry at the same time. Like there's some there's more cheers than booze, but there is the booze because obviously elite fans, AW Marky kind of like will hate punk. Yeah. And then the actual people that love wrestling will love punk. Like it's AEW, so like they're gonna love the elite, so they're gonna hate punk. That's why the the elite will not be on collision. Yeah. Um, then we had this followed up with Swerve, Blill, and Trent. Um, I rated two and a half stars. Didn't really care. Trent, um, Swerve won. It was it was just a match. Yeah. Um, what have I writ here? The stat pack. Something, what have I writ there? Something to do with Chris Statlander. Yeah, oh, yeah, it was St- Statlander package. They had a Statlander package, yeah. Um, the Acclaim were backstage. Acclaim came down to the entrance with fucking Tony Schiavone. And it was the most random interview. I don't understand what the interview was happening. It was Bailey Gunn basically saying, sorry, I let you guys down. And the Acclaim going, no, you didn't. And that was it. That was the old... They brought them down for that. I don't understand what that was. Um, next up, we had Don Callis and um, Takeshita in the middle of the ring. Don Callis absolutely did the best job, and Takeshita did like the typical like ranting in Japanese, but like proper yeah. like clearly like aggressive Japanese. People booed the shit out of him. He's already fucking majorly healed because Don Callis said, you know, he's better than Okada, 
he's better than Omega, who's just proper late, and a lot of fucking everyone was losing their minds. Yeah. Um, he's got Dom so he's level already heat. over. Got Dom level heat, Don Callis. But the trouble is, Takeshita can fucking wrestle. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Then, so they're going to continue the MJF versus Allen. No, they're not. So we're going to have Cassidy and Darby Allen in a tag team match against the Gates of Agony. Um, I rate this three stars. Really good match. But I don't understand why they're going with this. Um, Embassy um, lost. Gates of Agony are part of the Embassy. The uh, Gates of Agony then attack um, Darby and Sting. Uh, Darby and Allen. But then here comes Sting to the rescue. Um, so these two Samoan-looking giants get scared off by Sting. Yeah. Um, hooks down in the ring with Tony Schiavone because Tony Schiavone's having the day of his life. Um, and then here comes Le Faction Imgo Banales, and they're basically saying, you know, we don't get TV time. And then they attack Hook. And then do you know who saves Hook? No. Jungle Boy. Okay. Just... Completely, let's get this fella's storyline out of the way. Let's just move everyone into everything and pretend it never happened. Yeah. Um, then we had the outcast backstage, um, and they were just saying, you're lucky that we're champions now. Um, Nyla versus Stat, rated right two and a half stars. It was just your average women's match. Statland was clearly going to win it because they put the tart on the line. Yeah. And then, Garrett. No, I was just going to say, this just seemed pointless to make a title match because it did give away the ending. It was just like, yeah. right, we, we know she's just come back, you've just given her the title in a match that shouldn't have happened on a pay-per-view. Like, she's not losing here. Yeah. And then the spoiler I gave earlier, you saw Tyre really looking angry at the screen afterwards. Um, so, I don't know. Tyre's not going to win. There's no point. Um, Cole, versus, Cole and Doctor versus Jericho and um, Soraya. Um, I... Fine, this match, fine. I rate it three stars. Um, Cole and Baker won. That story needs to be over. It I won't be. I saw one of the worst sequences I have ever seen in this match between Britt and Soraya. What happened? They were sort of locking up and sort of doing reversals, but it was very, very slow. And then Baker pushed Soraya into the ring ropes she barely touched the ropes and came back, and it was just all no. around bad. It was just like, oh, this is awful. One of the worst I've seen. But yeah, uh, Cole and Baker won. That's the end of Dynamite. Let's get this over with. Yeah, I mean, it. I, I wasn't. I mean, it was better than the unsanctioned match, but. Eh. Yeah, but it wasn't hard. No, no, that is true. It was not hard to be better than that. According to Tony Khan, over 65,000 tickets have now been sold for AW Wembley. I cool. just randomly popped up on my Twitter. Cool. Um, I am not one of them. <laughs> um, like I said, not paying for a glorified house show, even if the card's going to be a banger. Screw you for a second. If it doesn't mean anything, I'm not interested. Um, it means everything. But yeah, uh, we will end the show there. So as always, follow us on our YouTube channel. Like and subscribe um, because we do appreciate any sort of traction that we get on there. The the followers have been going up steadily over the last sort of couple of months. So we're very happy with that. Follow us on Twitter at The HCW Show. Twitch The HCW Show. Instagram HCW Show. Facebook The HCW Show. You'll see all that above me here. Um, you've got my individual Twitter handle here. You've got rates over there. So make sure you give us both a follow. But yeah, unless you've got anything to add rate, we will we will go off the air there. I panicked that I wasn't recording this and I forgot I don't do that anymore. I was just like, <laughs> hold on. I've got nothing on the script. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, oh yeah, I don't do that. You do that yeah, now. No, I was, I I was so happy. <laughs> I was so worried for a second. I was like... Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. This podcast ain't coming out this week. I'm yeah, redoing this. No, no, not. We're 59 minutes and five seconds in. We are not redoing this. Um, but yeah, that'll be a goodbye Under from myself hour? then. Goodbye. Fuck See you, you Dibby. On the next one. <laughs>